All right, so Jack and Jill, we all know about Jack and Jill. Uh, went up the hill, uh, and at the top, Jill said, what the heck is going on with the hydrology around here? So why do we need an NHC Plus? Okay, we need an NHC Plus uh, as a spatial framework to help us organize the in increasing volume of uh, water quality related information or water related information that we have to deal with a very complex problem or set of problems. So in the early 90s, uh, EPA approached the USGS uh, about collaborating on a common um, stream database, leveraging their existing mapping, which is DLG Hydro, Digital Line Graph Hydro was the, the layer back in those days. And the outcome of that collaboration was the first national hydrography data set, 100,000 scale, um, which provides a stream addressing system. It provides the, the features. There's 50 something uh, hydro features that came off the topographic maps to, to um, provide the content for the NHD um, and the upstream downstream relationships. EPA had been uh, uh, developing uh, a less detailed version of the NHD called Reach File Version 1 back then, uh, and we married those concepts uh, with the more detailed, what was the highest detailed national coverage data we had at the time was 100,000 scale. So once we finished the first NHD product in 2000, um, USGS and the Forest Service went off to start working on 24,000 scale NHD and uh, EPA and the USGS water program um, started working on um, developing flow volume and velocity estimates for the initial NHD product to support um, modeling activities. So how do we do that? We needed to know the drainage area for each stream segment in the 100,000 scale data set, and so we needed to derive what we now call catchments. Um, uh, and so we combined these three data sets, the stream network from the 100,000 scale data set, the back then what watershed boundary data that was available we used, which was less than I think 10 states worth at that point, uh, and then the 30 meter national elevation data set. And so we modified, we used the, the um, WBD to wall up the ridge lines and the blue lines from the NHD to, to um, burn in uh, to the elevation, their location, so the low spots in the elevation aligned with the streams. And all that's background for uh, our preparation for doing watershed delineation and GIS. And so that's how we created the catchments. This is kind of a different picture of the same thing, showing elevation in the upper left, the WBD, the watershed boundary data set. Let me stop right there and say, feel free to call me on any acronyms that I use that you don't recognize, all right? So HUC-12, <laughs> which, are, which are the 12-digit hydrologic units uh, in the watershed boundary scheme. And then we use the, the NHD 100,000 scale stream network and what you see here is the result. So the yellow, the heavy yellow boundaries are the watershed boundary data set, HUC-12. Uh, the lighter yellow boundaries are the catchments, and you see that they surround each blue stream segment. Uh, this kind of looks like fabric to me, and so we've kind of coined the phrase geofabric uh, as a spatial framework for supporting um, the modeling and analysis that uh, we talked about, we were talking about earlier. So core data, I'm just going to hit the major bullets here. Those already mentioned the three primary ingredient data sets. We use this to produce uh, additional stream attributes, including flow volume and velocity and many others, and a whole library of uh, catchment attributes and the uh, flow direction and flow accumulation grids. We have data for the lower 48 for uh, many of the islands, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, some of the trust territories. We are talking with the uh, Department of Environmental Quality and others in Alaska about producing um, NHC Plus where their water quality priority uh, waters are. So not for all of Alaska. I think that's probably going to be somebody else's career. Um, be a fun project, but uh, big work. Um, 
We are just in the process of rolling out improved time of travel estimates, which take into consideration lake residence times, which we never had in our earlier versions. We're excited about that. Um, and we've produced um, a file geodatabase national um, version of the data set uh, that makes the data management simpler if you're trying to analyze areas that span our uh, vector uh, processing units. VPUs, you're going to hear a lot about those during the course of the workshop. Okay. We have mean annual and mean monthly flows as part of a core product, and there are lots of other activities, I'm not going to read through them all here, uh, to do additional flows that relate to the network. So we've, we've produced the initial NHD um, data set in 2006, and we have lots of applications now. Most of our applications are, um, well, basically GIS analysts. Uh, the largest part of our user community is folks who you know, do GIS and are, um, uh, have no problem finding geospatial data they need or uh, you know, figuring out how to um, pull complicated data sets together and, and do analyses. Uh, one of our goals now is to try to work our way down the right-hand side of this pyramid uh, so that we can make the NHC Plus content and capabilities more accessible to other users, which means uh, the Internet. And so we spend a lot of time working on uh, web services um, and um, have some interfaces set up that, uh, that allow you to have quick access to some of the core functions without having to, to actually fire up a uh, GIS session. So we have desktop tools and we have web services and we're going to be talking about those along the way and using some of them in the course. Um, here's an example of uh, ArcGIS online web map that shows the catchments in orange and the, and the NHD plus uh, flow lines in blue with the arrowhead showing which the direction of flow. Uh, here's um, a desktop ArcGIS accessing some web services that uh, EPA has developed to be able to identify the outlet shown here in yellow of an upstream search for water quality monitoring locations. Here is uh, Google Earth um, display using a web service to do watershed delineation. Same, same process as the previous slide where you start at the yellow dot you identify the network components that are upstream, and then you uh, aggregate the local drainage areas or catchments for each stream segment. So I want to talk to you, um, the last thing I want to talk to you about is a few applications that we, that we have. Um, first off, EPA sponsors and manages working in collaboration with states and other federal organizations uh, what we call the National Aquatic Resource Surveys. And these are um, national surveys that uh, focus on five water body types. So streams, rivers, wetlands, oceans, and lakes. And we do this on a five-year rolling cycle. Um, it's a statistically based um, survey where the selection or the, the um, Population of sampling possible sampling locations are are the streams and and lakes and rivers in the NHD, uh, and a subset of those are randomly selected for uh, sampling, um, and it gives us uh, some sense. Uh, it's one tool among many for um, what's going on in in the country with respect to those water bodies, and there are reports that are on the EPA website if you're not familiar with that already. Um, the next item is water quality modeling uh, that the USGS does. Sparrow, if you haven't heard of it, is a, is a water quality model. Rich, is Rich back there? Rich, why don't you stand up? Again, put your hand up. I know it's getting harder to see him back there. But Rich is the person on our team who is the Sparrow modeler. So I wanted to identify him if you have questions about that. Um, we also use NHD Plus to support uh, our uh, water quality reporting requirements to Congress. 
where we collect uh, state water quality assessments um, and report, uh, report out on that in a national document. Um, EPA's doing pesticide risk assessments using NHC plus and endangered species data. Um, we have collaborated with, um, with Bill Samuels. Bill, I saw you, where are you? Bill, please stand up. Okay. So Bill's one of those veteran uh, users that I was talking about earlier, um, and we'll have him come up and talk a little bit about his icy water application, uh, which is a spill response tool based on NHC+. Plus. Uh, National Fish Habitat Partnership is another uh, multi-organizational group that uses um, NHC Plus to assess risk to fish habitat around the country. So, and some recent additions, uh, Idaho is using the catchments and NLCD to compute a disturbance index, which helps them prioritize which lakes they're going to monitor in support of their uh, uh, water, quality, water quality program. Uh, the next to the last one, this one is exciting. This is uh, something on a scale that we've never you know, even contemplated before. This uh, OWDI is the Open Water Data Initiative. Um, this national flood interoperability experiment included taking the NHD plus framework, the national data, and uh, running it through a supercomputer uh, where we did flow estimates and, and uh, support of flood forecasting. Um, and so we think that there's lots of possibilities there. We're still trying to kind of get our head around that coming from desktop <laughs> um, and really excited about, about the use of that um, by the National Weather Service to support their flood forecasting. And the last item, um, our Office of Research and Development in Corvallis, uh, Oregon, um, has produced an extensive library of landscape metrics which are associated with the catchments um, that provide a rich collection of uh, supplemental information to help you uh, do your applications, and that's available now. So that's it for me. Any questions right now? <laughs> 